Coming up right now, a company says no to a settlement payment because it was too much jiggle room. We'll explain. <laughs> also coming up, at just 14 years old, this teen has been named America's top young scientist. Wait until you hear about his breakthrough cure. Ah, I like this kid. Uh, a little later on, Paris Hilton transforms into a mama bear mm -hmm. and sets the record straight with social media trolls. Daily Flash starts right now. Get ready for trending news and entertainment. This is Daily Flash with your host, Andrea Jackson and Mitch English. The fun starts right now. This is Daily Flash. Hi everyone, I'm Andrea Jackson. And I am Mitch English, welcoming you to Daily Flash as we kick off mm -hmm. this week. So glad to have you here. We're joined by our buddy Matt Doolittle. Matty! Matty. How's the weather, Matt? Sunny with a chance of awesome, Mr. English. Well, of awesome? Ooh, We're going to get a little bit of that. I like it. I like, that so I like it a lot, too. Yeah, I'm ready for this week. I am ready, ready, ready. What you doing? What's, okay. what's going on with How you? about this? Um, you know I love these Olympic stories. Uh, NBC is looking to hire a content creator for the Summer Olympics next year. You know, the Summer Olympics are being held in Paris. Paris. But there's a surf competition. Well, there's no place to surf off the coast of oh, France. Right. They're holding the surf competitions in Tahiti. Okay. Oh, that's interesting. Isn't that interesting? So they are looking for a content creator to go to Tahiti to cover the surf competition. <laughs> what do you have to know? Tell me. I know. The surf. <laughs> so you know how Surf's to surf. Uh, you, you know, uh, when I hear about the surfing thing, it's like you're, 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 the, uh, the amount that you can ride and what you can do depends yeah. on the wave. Yeah, exactly. How, I mean, like, so like me and you go out yeah. and surf, you might get a better wave than I do. Do I lose points on my that? My surf, my wave. I, I, I guess the wave, the Brody, that's man. That's right. My that's surf, interesting. my wave. Yeah. I would love to hear what a surf reporter would actually do or even sound like. So like, <laughs> he was like gleaming the Cube, <laughs> what? That was awesome. Back to you, Bob. Dude, Bob. <laughs> anyway, it's called Tap into Tahiti, um, and it's a deal with NBC okay. and a you know a visa program. So, Very neat. Yeah, well, kind of cool. If kind you're looking for a team. job, that might yeah. be the one for you. We go to a place that's just beautiful. Mm -hmm. Talking about Colorado, and a welding company there is actually getting fined for paying out a five-figure settlement all in loose change. <laughs> <laughs> An attorney representing a subcontract in the dispute received a delivery at her office from a flatbed truck driver. Turns out the delivery was the settlement for her client, $23,000, all in coins. How much did it weigh? 6,500 pounds. Wow. Well, the attorney just wasn't amused, and a judge ordered that the company actually pay in a more conventional way. The court also tacked on an additional eight thousand dollars in fees <laughs> for malicious intent and i think that's well deserved I, I, you know if you don't want to pay it you don't want to pay it i get it i know uh, you lost in court and you got that's that's a game it's like monopoly you, you, you lose you go to jail you got to give up the money it just, exactly. just it's part of the rules I, could you imagine having to count through all that change well, just to take imagine, it all to the bank i'm just imagining him going to walmart and going up to coin, coin star, star and having to sit there for a couple hours and dump those things in. then they take 10 percent so you end up getting that's <laughs> right anyway. so there's 2600 bucks right off the top. Yeah. Wow. Finally. Well, a middle school teen has been named America's top young scientist after developing a bar of soap that could be useful in the treatment of skin cancer. The 14-year-old said he wants to cure cancer one bar of soap at a time. Love this guy. The teen has always been interested in biology and technology, and this challenge gave him the perfect platform to showcase his ideas. He pitched an idea for skin cancer treating soap made from compounds that could reactivate skin cells damaged by the sun. The three um, young scientist winner believes young minds can make a positive impact on the world. What a great Man, idea. I'm, I'm so impressed by this kid, too. I mean, it's something. To, and first off, it takes uh, looking at something brand new way. And I yes. think our youth, our kids, they could see things in a different way. And that's what it was. It was like, okay, skin cancer. What? How can we help skin cancer? Well, how about a soap? You know, I mean, where it Brilliant. started, I don't know. I mean, it, it's something that simple that uh, that are it gives you hope for yeah. tomorrow when you see stuff yeah. like that. Yeah, a fresh pair of eyes, I think. Fresh pair of That's eyes. really great. A good perspective and a sort of how can we solve this problem. There you go. All right, Paris Hilton shutting down nasty comments about her new son's appearance. Online trolls are having a field day with the appearance of her newborn's head. She says her baby is perfectly healthy. He just has a big brain. Hilton and her husband recently welcomed their first child together in January via surrogate. The pair married in late 2021 and kept the news of their baby boy private for about a week. Hilton later announced his birth on Instagram with a close-up photo of her holding his hand, writing, you are already loved beyond words.
I think good. there's a limit when it comes to this kind of stuff. I agree. Social media trolls. I mean, you know, she just had a baby. Can you just back off? It's ridiculous. Well, and first off, you're, you're making fun of a, of a defenseless kid, number yes. one. I, and, you know, I mean, say what you want. I mean, those, uh, we all have features that might step up, but yeah, the kid does have a, it, but doesn't give you your right to yeah. make fun of him. I mean, it's a, it, he had yeah. nothing to do with it. It's right. not, and, you know, so I think this is a little bit of her really, yes, yeah, really showing a first step of her really being like, you know, mom, different from what we known her from days past, you know. And you can understand I why like celebrities are so hesitant to put their children out in, in the spotlight because they didn't choose that no, life. Just because that. Paris is popular and she's a social media and a celebrity doesn't mean that the kid wants to follow in those footsteps. And, and we'll see where that turns out with all that. But yeah. uh, I mean, that's where she made her fame and it, it's a new, you know, maybe if she starts putting it out there and hey, he's got his own Instagram, then then I then, then I'll have then you can start trolling. That changes the conversation. Yeah, I agree. Yes. Turns out, Cher is her biggest critic. The Believe singer recently revealed that she has never been a fan of her own music or her own voice. The Grammy winner says that she thinks the tone of her voice is weird. Do you believe in it's life? Yeah, <laughs> not, not even with the uh, auto tune. Auto -tune. Right. She also added that it doesn't sound like a man and it doesn't sound like a woman. It's somewhere in between. Uh, I wouldn't begin on her. Uh, yes. No, no comment. I was trying to. Don't, don't, don't. Just stop. I remember Chastity was such a beautiful woman. Uh, despite her decades long career at the top of the charts, a 77 year old woman, she She's is amazing. 77, y'all added that she hasn't always felt uh, actually content with her popular hits. However, she did say that she's actually excited about her new Christmas album. She recorded it with her 37-year-old boyfriend. Look you go, Cher. <laughs> you go, Cher. Cher said that the two met during Fashion Week in Paris last year, immediately had a connection. She admits the 40-year age gap becomes obvious when he actually doesn't get some of her references. And I, <laughs> some? I totally get that. I would imagine. I just smack, snap out of it. Smack out of it. <laughs> Gosh, yeah, 77. I mean, yeah. and, and you're seeing that. You're seeing Madonna. Uh, Madonna's still out there doing it. Yeah. I think the quintessential, the queen essential, if you want to use that term, is Dolly Parton. Just oh, still uh, rocking yeah, and rolling. And, and, and doing good things. And I think she is at that point. I too. think all those ladies have younger men, too. Maybe there's something to be said for I, that. I think there's something totally 100% to say for that. <laughs> It's a little bit different when the guy has the girl because you can't keep up. But if you're, you know, sure. you're probably at the same pace Maybe. at that age. But, but what does what does this guy have to do? Like, what do they even have in common? Like, uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> share forty year right? difference there. Right now, it looks like blonde hair. But that's <laughs> I mean, one looks like Dennis Rodman, the other yeah. one looks like Jack Skellington. So I don't know. Sometimes you can't explain love; it just happens. Yeah. I agree. <laughs> and you can't turn back time. No, right? you can't. All right, one guy on Instagram gaining a lot of attention for his posts about his life with special needs pets. All right, listen to this. He's got nine dogs, story. a rabbit, a pig, two ducks, four chickens, and a turkey whose name is Tofu. It's Steve Griggs. Oh, that's a big day there. Yeah, that's a, that's a Disney movie way right now. <laughs> Wolfgang, uh, his Instagram page has more than 900,000 followers, and the Denver resident recently published a children's Aww. book called The One and Only Wolfgang. It's about his unique family loving the old. Steve uh, says that he always has at least three or four dogs around him, but it was the death of his dog Wolfgang, who was Wolfgang rather, who was hit by a car that motivated him to open up his home and heal his heart. He said he went to uh, the shelter and adopted the oldest dog they had, which was a Chihuahua with four bad knees and a heart condition. The 55-year-old accountant said that he had immediate healing effect after losing his beloved dog. Since then, he only adopts senior dogs. Steve said senior dogs are the best because they don't require the energy younger dogs need, and I agree <laughs> with that. And there is a sense of, well, you forget about your problems when you think about others, mm -hmm. but uh, does that mean you get into a relationship? No, but a pet can offer that. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Is that they need you and they love you unconditionally mm -hmm. no matter what. And he chooses. And it, for me, I didn't have a pet for a long time. I know you got a cat, Matt, mm -hmm. and, I, and I thought I was getting a cat, and I got you got cats. Two. You got two. <laughs> that are, they're insane. Two cats. Yeah, I was oh, yeah. But one, uh, the, this one cat, with, uh, Jake, there's Jake and Finn. Jake looks like Morris the cat. This cat will follow me around. He, I'm his, Aww. I guess. You know? And I was like, oh, and the cat, when I first got it. And now, like, the cat is just, like, it's Connected. bonded to me everywhere. I mean, I'm serious. He'll follow me Velcro. around the house. And I've never had that for, you know, because I never had a pet. Because yeah. I thought I didn't want to have that kind of connection. Yeah. And you love horses. I love horses. I love horses. And I've got two dogs, two rescue dogs. And and two horse. you got two horse two dogs. Two horse dogs. dogs. <laughs> Ra Rama Weiner. Weimaraner. And a German short hair pointer. They're both big wow. dogs. Yeah. But, but, there, but there is something. 
something so wonderful about having that pet when you walk home or when you come home and you get that jingle jangle and that energy that comes right at you, whether it's a cat or a dog or a turkey named Tofu. And, and, and it takes that yeah. to, for you to realize, you know, I, I am, I, I, I can actually help. I have something to live for. Yeah. I know not that he might be suicidal, I don't know, like, but I have something to live for each day that you know yeah. you go home and you have somebody waiting for you, it's the dog. Exactly. Say, Except and they have five such a in the short moment of time with you. you. <laughs> That you know they want to they want to appreciate every second they get they get they seven years with you and that's it. Uh, so. Seven years. Seven ten. Seven to ten. Oh God, now I'm sad. Fifteen twenty. I'll think about it during the break and be happy when we return. We're talking financially speaking after this. That. Yeah. Let's Welcome back to Daily Flash. I'm Andrea Jackson. A new hero group is emerging to keep the U.S. economy out of a recession. Baby boomers. Insider's Cork Gaines is here to explain why. Hey, Cork, thanks for joining us. Uh, happy to be here. Thanks for having me. So why are boomers able to save the day in this current state of the economy? Well, I mean, it, I, as most people know right now, the economy is just in a really weird place. But all the things that are kind of acting like pressures and headwinds towards uh, most people, uh, baby boomers are kind of immune to it. Um, you know, they have less debt. They are generally don't have student loans. Their real estate value has gone through the roof, and they're not really, <clears throat> they're not really worried about having to move for jobs or for families. So they can just sit tight with their three percent mortgages and keep on spending their money. <laughs> so, so <laughs> I love the way you put that. Where are they putting their money at this point? Well, that's the, that's the weird thing. Like when we always knew that this baby boomer group was going to at some point hit their retirement years, and we were all worried that they were going to, one, stop working in, and being productive in the society, and two, we can, we kind of were worried that they were uh, going to be a little tighter with their money. It turns out that's either of those are the case. A lot of them are still working, uh, some not by choice, but a lot of them are working by choice, and they're also kind of spending freely. They're, they're kind of living through this, uh, I just want to live my life and have a good time, and uh, they have a lot of money to do it with. So how would you say their spending behavior differs from that of younger generations? Well, we've actually seen in the last few years, um, you know, as kind of the savings for most people have kind of dwindled since the pandemic, that their spending has actually kind of increased more than younger people uh, through compared to their relative wealth. So and what they're doing is they're just kind of like they're going out and like a lot of us, we were stuck inside for a couple of years during the pandemic and they got cabin fever and now everyone wants to get out and spend money on experiences and they're just doing it a little bit more than everyone else, whether that's cruises or vacations to Europe or whatever it is, uh, they are spending their money freely. And armed with this kind of information, what are some market opportunities for not just the boomers, but for, for everybody? Uh, you know, that's a good question. We're, we're seeing this thing, you know, even beyond boomers, you know, a, a fun term that I've heard called funflation, where, I mean, just everybody is just out having a good time. So, you know, whether that's entertainment, uh, concerts, movie theaters, uh, vacations, cruise lines, people want to get out and have experiences and baby boomers are at the front of the line with a lot of those things. I love that. The <laughs> fun experiences, the fun economy. Well, are businesses catering to baby boomers right now to get a piece of what I guess many experts are saying is there's a $75 trillion pie attached to this age group? Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, they better be. <laughs> I mean, that's <laughs> about the best way to put it. Um, yeah, there's, there's a lot of money. The, the, the pressures, like I was saying, on the economy are not on them as hard. So they are not uh, you know, tightening their wallets as much as the rest of the younger generations are right now. And so there is a huge opportunity right now. They have, uh, you know, more free time. They have a $75 trillion nest egg to play with and they're getting out and they want to get out and experience the world just like the rest of us um, after being stuck inside for a while. I don't blame them. Cork, thank you so much for joining us. Where can people find you? Uh, insider.com. That's where I'm at every day. Court Gaines, thank you so much for providing that great financial information. We'll chat with you next time. All right, thanks, Andrea. And then there's this. Walt Disney cited the ongoing SAG after strike as the major reason behind the decision, but insiders point to upcoming reshoots as proof Disney execs fear the movie may bomb at the box office. It's a Seven Dwarfs movie. Oh, okay. Over the summer, the film received negative attention after it was revealed that the Seven Dwarfs' iconic roles in the original film were going to be replaced by seven 
magical non-dwarf creatures. And all in all, an effort to keep the storytelling in line with the 20th, century fo uh, 20th century's commitment to political correctness. Previously, they were seen on the set of the movie, included a mix of men and women of different ethnicities with a real dwarf among their number. But now, in a new uh, publicity shot, Snow White, played by Rachel Zegler, is seated and surrounded by seven CGI dwarfs. And we all know that there's this ongoing fight uh, and we've seen it with the the Willy Wonka movie where yeah, they're right, like right. oh why aren't we using you know real dwarves and, <laughs> or, or and, dwarfism and, and you know and uh, because they're using Hugh Grant I think for the yeah movie. they're using Hugh Grant oh, CGI yeah. and, and, and yeah. so they're like well what about and then Peter Dinklage he's fighting the whole thing and he's he's mad they're not using them but then he's like why are we still doing dwarves in the seven dwarves like it's it, a thing you can't do the movie without it being the movie now originally as you had mentioned there they went totally and everybody's going oh this is PC PC I'm starting to watch more movies. I don't know if it's just because I'm uh, watching the, genera uh, the, the genre of music movies I would watch, but people are now turning against this. Like they're tired of seeing this political correctness. Um, I just saw um, No Hard Feelings last night. <laughs> yes. I texted him. I don't know if he knows you. There's a scene don't look in at this my movie. Text. Don't look at my text. <laughs> yeah, don't look at There's a scene in this movie. But anyway, but they go after all the millennials in there. Yeah. And not millennials, yeah. but the uh, the PC uh, police. Are you basically. talking about the party? The party yeah. Yeah. Did you see it? Yeah. And you know what scene I'm talking about? Yes. I was. Like Jennifer Lawrence, I love you. Yeah, I love I know. you. Anyway, and, and that was a movie that went totally against it. And I think yeah. we're starting to see that. And, and, and this is probably a result of and it. And Bad Dads, you know, and you saw that one where, where they just they blow it all out there as like yeah. we have like we've oh, I think we've overstepped it with this stuff yeah. at this point. Like I'm I'm I like in political correctness. Like I'm all for the bad dirty jokes and stuff like that. But it's like you finally get to a point where it's like okay. Can we have the seven dwarves? They've been around for a couple hundred years. Yeah. And if it's offensive, don't do the sh the movie altogether. Yeah. It's like, hey, if, you, right. if you're going to be that PC, then don't do dwarves. If you if, if the if the political correctness that you're following is going to take over the, what the exact theme of the whole movie is, oh, you have to do dwarves. I'm sorry, there's no other way to do it. But don't you think there's a small group of people that are screaming no the loudest? No yes. <laughs> sorry, Wait, you might get canceled. No, we're going to get canceled. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. All right, Andrea's okay. got to go to HR for the first time. I didn't, I didn't even think about that. But no, I think it's true. I think there's a small group of people that are screaming the loudest, and they're the ones that get all the attention on social media. Uh, and you know, I, there are some there are some valid arguments to be made. But when it comes to our, uh, entertainment, I don't need a warning about the Seven Dwarfs no. from 1936. <laughs> I really don't. You know, it's I mean, ridiculous that we have to live like this. I'm sorry, but grow up, pull your pants up, and, you know, don't worry about it. And Jennifer Lawrence, keep making movies. Yes. <laughs> and Agreed. fight scenes. We have more Daily Flash coming up right after this. Don't go anywhere. You're watching <laughs> Daily Flash. In this week's Boss Lady, we want to introduce you to an entrepreneur who's taken her love of business and popcorn to an entirely new level. Please welcome Shaniqua Major to Daily Flash. Major, welcome. Good morning. I'm so happy to be here. You started a business, and it's Major's Project Pop, and I love this. What inspired you to start this popcorn business? So years ago, when I first started working in public relations, I had a ton of restaurant and food clients all throughout Central Florida. So working to help start this, you know, local coffee shop and this business grow into something big and beautiful really ignited this love for food that I forgot that I had even from um, a child. So um, some years ago, um, Easton Market actually launched this foodpreneur series. And I thought, why not join this just to see what it looks like to actually start your own business. And out of that birth, this desire to really create a health focused um, snack that I could feed my nieces. And that's how Majors Project Pop came to be. Three, three courses later, I debuted the brand to the city of Orlando and I've been popping ever since. So I, I love this story. How is your brand different from others? And I guess why popcorn out of all the foods you could choose? You know, people ask me all the time, why, why did you choose popcorn? And the answer is, I really don't know. It, it, there, there's not some beautiful, magical story that makes this like, wow, that just sounds so cool. I actually just thought it would be a great snack that is a very approachable, that you could do a lot of things with, and that um, inherently by itself, 
It is very nutritious, can, can be great for you. And then what you add to it is what makes it either better or worse for your body. And I just, I, I love snacks and I love to create things that people can really enjoy. And when it comes to what makes my brand different from others, I always like to say that one, you know, the fact that I am a part of my business adds a special sauce in the same way that Andrea, because you are a part of your business and the things that you want to work on, it makes it special. I believe inherently we are all just so gifted and talented with so many different things. And I bring a unique experience, both as a publicist and someone who has a love for food, but particularly as someone who has a love for community. I believe that um, my distinct perspective when it comes to business and why I do things adds value to the brand and then add value to the people that um, engage in our brand as well. I love that you describe your approach as redemptive entrepreneurship. Share your insight with us. Yeah, you know, that, that redemptive part sounds very lofty, um, but in plain terms to me, it simply means doing business in a better way. You know, Having worked with so many businesses over the years, both big and small, I realized that everyone's why is very different. Some businesses, for all the right reasons to them, are very bottom line driven, and some are very mission driven. And for me, you know, when I started this business, I just thought it was something cool. And then once I got into it, I realized that this is actually my business and I can do it on terms that actually make sense for me and make sense for my heart. So when I say redemptive, it simply means like, for example, with our brand, popcorn is one of those um, industries where you can make a delicious snack with the worst ingredients and almost charge whatever you like. And if it's good, people are going to buy it, right? Well, for me, I actually invest in very high quality, all organic ingredients and our price point isn't low, but because, you know, it costs, but I could sell my popcorn at the same price and use things that I would never want to put in my body. So it's me being very intentional about why I do things, why I sell the things that I sell, never selling something that I actually wouldn't consume and just being mindful of the end user and not just the fact that I want my business to grow and scale and make more money. I love that you've gotten so much attention um, about what you've done, including Hollywood. They they use your popcorn for many of their premieres. I know. I am still in shock when I think about the things that have happened over the past three years because the business started many moons ago, but I always like to say, I felt like it was in 2020 when things really took off. I was sitting here in the same office of mine, plugging away for work. And then I just started getting ding, 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 ding. I'm like, what is happening? And I checked my notifications and I was getting sales from all over the country. And it was because one news site featured us and we just took off. And from there, yeah, I started getting calls from Google and Netflix and Hulu and all these brands and I'm like, wait, what is happening? And I, it's still hard for me to wrap my head around it. But what I believe is just, I, you know, I believe that when you do the hard work, when the timing is right, if it's right for you, things happen. And I think it was just the right time. And I, like I said, I don't, I'm always with very few words when it comes to where this brand has gone and what I believe, it, uh, where I believe it will go, because it's just, it's nothing like what I imagined initially. Where can people yeah. find you and where can they go for more information about your product? Absolutely. So our digital home is eatprojectpop.com. So that's our website. There you can learn more about what we do and what we make and you can purchase and be shipped directly to your home. We also, um, in, in the Central Florida area, have a local pickup location as well. And then we do pop-ups throughout the city. So. For those who are out and about, they can come see us and check our Instagram, which is at Eat Project Pop, where we always share updates about where we're going and what we're doing. Major, thanks for joining us and being our Boss Lady of the Week. This is Daily Flash with your hosts, Andrea Jackson and Mitch English. Trending news and entertainment. This is Daily Flash. Hi, everybody. I am Mitch English. I'm Andrea Jackson. This is Daily Flash, your source for trending news and entertainment. You know, one thing that gets me going in the morning, I'm not awake until I take a shower. Okay. And shower just kind of wakes me so up. So you're a morning shower guy. I'm a morning shower guy. I have to, if I take one at night, I sleep a little bit better, but I know, well, I'm just wasting water because when I wake up, i got to take another shower. Gotcha. Our friends over at uh, Degree and uh, Axe Body Spray has uh, actually come out with a... Uh, Ax. It's ask. Huh? It's ask. Oh, it's ask, ask. body spray. Okay, I'm saying ask. Okay, ask. All right, very good. 
fix that. I'll fix that next time. Uh, they're saying actually sales are up uh, really? for deodorant now. Is that so? Yeah, because basically Why? what happened, they're actually rebounding because basically what happened during the pandemic back in uh, 2020. Whatever, Nobody cared about body odor. Right. People quit taking <laughs> showers. People are like, well, I'm not going to work. Why do I need I to stank, put I stank that whole time. I had a horrible beard, too. Yeah, you. Yeah, because you were staying at the house all yeah, day, yeah. and you're like, oh, and then like my daily shower turned into, well, it's Wednesday. I guess I better. Uh, and, <laughs> for like the jobs we had, uh, okay, yeah, well, like you know. radio and TV, it was just you know you got to look good, and if, uh, if from the, the waist on, up, the waist up, you have to do that. Mm -hmm. So I anyway, I wore pants for six months during that. And you're not wearing any right now. No, no, we, right we've now. warned you about that. Personal care <laughs> items, uh, like at the uh, stores, are up yeah. by 8%. So uh, people are starting to smell better and take uh, a little better care, I guess, staying cleaner. Well, you know what took a hit, too, was um, a lot of hairdressers lost a lot of money during that time mm, yeah. because people weren't going to the office, right. so they weren't taking care of their hair. Much like their you know, body, they were relaxed at home. They let themselves go a little bit. So they were really struggling during that time because nobody was coming to see them or they couldn't go to other people's homes to take care of their hair. And My sister said, yeah, she's yeah. a hairdresser. Oh, yeah. She had her own salon. She went through that big time. So there yeah. you go. Well, a Colorado welding company is getting fined for paying at a five-figure settlement in loose change. All right. <laughs> Bitter party of five. Exactly. An attorney representing a subcontractor in the dispute received a delivery at her office from a flatbed truck driver. Turns out the delivery was the settlement for her client. $23,000 all doggy. in coins. The payment weighed more than 6,500 pounds. The attorney was not amused and a judge ordered the company to pay in a more conventional way. The court also tacked on an additional $8,000 in fees for quote malicious intent. This is not the first time somebody has done no. this. Uh, I remember even earlier this year, somebody, they lost a lawsuit and they went and they dropped um, all the uh, coins in the driveway. And I think it was uh, like a, it was a mechanic and basically they, were, they had oil on it and stuff like that. So he got fined that. Plus he had to clean up the mess that he made as well. So if you're thinking about doing that, just remember the courts are not really happy but, that you are going to be doing it. But you got to think about it. if you did get that settlement, you could go to the club and make it hail. That, that would be <laughs> for a long time. Yeah. But then another lawsuit would happen. Yeah, that's yeah. true. This is impressive. Uh, I love these stories. He's a middle-aged teenager, and he's been named America's top young scientist by, by Daily Flash and other important people. Why? He developed a bar of soap. We were talking about how more and more people yeah. are washing up now. Yeah. It actually can be useful in the treatment of skin cancer. This is really cool. He's only 14 years old, and he says that he wants to cure cancer one bar of soap at a time. The teen has always been interested in biology and technology, and this challenge actually gave him the perfect platform to showcase his ideas. He pitched an idea for skin cancer treating soap made from compounds that could reactivate skin cells damaged by the sun. The 3M Young Scientist winner believes that young minds can make a positive impact on the world, and I think that everybody agrees with him on, on this. And this is so positive yeah. to see this. I mean, I, I get when I first heard the story, I was so excited to see something like this because of all of all the bad news you hear about yeah. what's going on. Here's somebody that's looking forward to the t future. Well, and you hope that his idea will end up inspiring other scientists that might have a little bit more experience yeah, right. that can further this idea. But like you had mentioned, sometimes all it takes is a fresh pair of eyes and just a, a new perspective to bring light to something like skin cancer and, and it's just that simple and so and i think this says a lot to to parents out there is that you is that your child let them explore what they love yeah. and they come up with ideas because this kid loved biology and we said all right well we'll give you the tools that you need if this is what you want and they're going to probably change their mind a lot of times yeah. too on that so keep very that in mind. true we're going to be checking in with jessica reyes yeah. to find out what's trending it's trending with jess right after this don't go anywhere Welcome back to Daily Flash. Here's Jessica Reyes with Trending with Jess. So it's been a rough few weeks in the news, and that's why in Trending with Jess, I'm bringing you the fun and positive to your screens with some trending positive videos to kick off the month of November. Number one, I want you to meet NYC's most popular rat. 
It's Donut Rat, and he's viral. You see, when TikTok user Small Red Car, aka Carly Hitner, uploaded this video and captioned it with, Donut Rat treats his woman better than half of the other rats in this city. She didn't imagine it would receive almost 3 million views. As you can see, the rat steals the donut and then moves on to share it with what we are assuming is his or her bestie. This video probably reminds you of the 2015 viral video of a rat carrying a large pizza sliced downstairs in New York. Amongst the comments, people said things like, he's a provider, that, that one hit home, and also a high value man, so... Fellas, I just, this would be a good time to take some notes. Now on to all my little boo thangs. You've seen the viral TikTok dance during the past few months of Paul Russell's catchy tune, Little Boo Thang, all right? It's a feel good song and something the world could use right now, right? First uploaded this past June with a sample of Best of My Love by The Emotions, Little Boo Thang became a viral sensation. I'm still trying to learn the dance. So what's the backstory? Was this even a full song? It wasn't, but hear it from Russell himself. It wasn't even a snippet of a broader song. It was like, that's all that I had. It wasn't, I didn't think I would make a full song. I just thought like fun content, you know? Oh my goodness, fun content, you know, lots of fun content. Well, it has become more than that for him because the song is currently being used on shows like The Bachelor and in stadiums before major games. Uh, FYI, Russell quit his job the day the official full song was released and to think, he's thinking, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and do this song. We're like on a viral vibe, just a couple of, you know, seconds of it. And then everyone's like, we need the full song. So good for him. In more positive trending news, this one right here will give you all the feels. Amazon Amazon driver Elijah Bryant did much more than deliver a package at one Chicago home recently. He delivered some fashion pointers and scents. The 42-year-old was doing his typical route when he saw teen Luke Breyer trying to wear his tie properly as his fam waited around. Looks like Brian was like, mm, I'm not happy with this, with how long it looks. And he had to do his thing and help the teen and check out this heartwarming moment. Oh my God, what's the name of that cologne? Burberry. Burberry. Oh, Or is it Gucci Guilty? Gucci Guilty. Yeah. Yeah, see? Drag car. Drag car. Drag car. Yeah, yeah. That is my favorite part. Ooh, yes. Brian is a father of three sons and five girls. He said he felt the need to pass along some knowledge he had learned as a teen himself. He's an avid churchgoer since he was, you know, since he was young. He often dressed up in nice suits and attended with his family. But this story has more to it because in a recent interview with a teen's mom, she said the timing of this couldn't have been better. She said, we live here in Chicago where racial tension is so high, especially in our neighborhood. It, had, it was just great to see two people reacting to each other regardless of color. And that's the part that just really makes me happy. So again, more stories like this so we can talk about them right here on Trending with Jess. Now, I hope you're wearing waterproof mascara because the stories keep coming. And now I'm telling you about a single mom. A single mom of six children is thanking some automotive tech students at a high school in Virginia who worked all year to fix up a car to surprise her and take a load off her back. The students gave the car to Michelle Mendez, who says this will give her the ability to take her kids to places they need to get to and from work. Giving Words, created by Eddie Brown and his wife, they help uh, make a difference for single mothers. Brown said, the component that I look at is just hope. And just seeing that in her eyes as she received this car and just the excitement and it means how much it means for the boys really, I really loved it. So Giving Words, it's a nonprofit that helps the single moms and they relieve their transportation expenses. So beautiful stories to keep you motivated, to keep you uplifted. And we'll have more of that coming up. I'm Jessica Reyes. You can always catch me on Daily Flash Latino every Saturday. KSA Entertainment believes in our communities. We value those who have dedicated their lives to enrich our own. KSA Entertainment is proud to introduce our corporate initiative, KSA Cares. KSA Cares shines a light, gives a voice, and lends a helping hand through compelling awareness initiatives. From supporting veterans to environmental awareness, KSA Entertainment is proud to produce content supporting ways to help communities all across America.
Welcome back to Daily Flash, Mitch English, along with Andrea Jackson and my third cousin, Matt Doolittle. <laughs> we are at today's roundtable, and we're talking uh, today a little focus on the past, mm -hmm. okay? That's right. Our story comes from the YouTube channel Cut, and it brought up some bad memories for our sweet producer, sweet baby James. <laughs> uh, the question people were asked, do you miss your ex? That's the question uh -huh. for today. Uh, yeah. We would love to know, uh, do you miss your ex here? I mean, I, I think that it, it, it's something that I think the answer should always be yes. And I'll tell you why. Okay. It's because it, it, when you say you miss your ex for good or for bad. Yeah. You should, you know, I mean, when you think missing something, you realize all the bad, you know, oh, I think it's good. But sometimes do you miss that, you know, that you were able to overcome this sort of thing or, or uh, this kind of a situation? I absolutely 100% miss my, my ex-wife. And she she knows that and she kind of holds it over me, I think, sometimes. <laughs> And, but but I do. I, I mean, obviously, I was in love with this person at one time. She was in love with me, and there has to be something there. I'd love to hear from you guys. Yeah. Okay, Matt, you're up next. Uh, parts of it, but I'm also. I think I learned a lot from it. But I wouldn't. It, it it's not a relationship I would get back into. I'm happily engaged right now, and uh, my last relationships always ended up with like fighting at the end and everything. But there were <laughs> parts, but for the most part, I do not miss my ex. Yeah. Okay. I for I lucked out. I uh, actually my ex TV wife. Uh, we actually got back together. So <laughs> we reunited. We reunited. So it always so works good. good. Yeah. I think if you if you concentrate on trying to get back and like pining after, you're not moving on, and that's what a breakup is all about. Mm -hmm. You're breaking up from those emotions, and you're moving away from it. However, it, it's kind of like you should. Uh, Forgive, but not forget. You always that exactly. makes sense, and I think that's along the lines. And then Matt, when you were speaking, I'm like, you've had so many girlfriends. I mean, do, which one are you even talking about? <laughs> I mean, do we really want to get into that? No, I had, no, 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 no. My, my first wife and I, and I, I, I do. I, tr I still love my wife, my ex-wife, and my my new wife knows this as well. Sure. I have a I have a love for her. But we met when I was 16 years old and she was 14, and we were together for 30 years. Yes. How can you not? And we have four awesome kids out of this. Yeah, so I think yeah. I might be in a little bit different situation. This is true. I want to know what. Jackson uh, has to say about well, that. Well, you know, you I love at? this saying, people come into your life for a reason, a yeah. season, or a lifetime. And I think that you can appreciate all of your exes teach you something. So yes, do I miss some of them? A hundred percent. And there are some I miss more than others. I mean, they've all been wonderful they, guys. They teach you and stuff. And they do teach you stuff. So we want you to sound off on yes, this. Leave do. us a comment on our Instagram. And if it's good, we'll talk about it right here on the show. Well, it's important to refresh your skincare routine each fall and winter. Here's the VP of Innovation at Massage Envy with more. As the seasons change, so does your skin, and your skincare routine should too. Nicole Pelichek, VP of Innovation at Massage Envy Franchising, is here with more. With winter right around the corner, now is the perfect time to think about refreshing your skincare routine. A healthy, glowing complexion requires a consistent regimen tailored to your individual skincare needs which is why consulting with a licensed esthetician is a great place to start. Frequent facials can also help alleviate some of your skin's most pesky traits. Facials can help encourage cell turnover by getting rid of the top layer of skin to reveal smoother skin underneath. Massage Envy franchise locations offer memberships to encourage regular routine appointments. In addition to facials, Massage Envy also just launched an oxygenating treatment featured by PCA Skin offered at select franchise locations, which will leave your skin smooth, purified, and glowing. To learn more and book an appointment and learn about holiday offerings, visit MassageEnvy.com. You know, it's estimated that a majority of people in the United States uh, suffer from nearly a billion colds each year. Family physician Dr. Leslie Gonzalez joins us to help you get prepared for cold, cough, <clears throat> and flu season. Hey there, Dr. Gonzalez. Thank you for having me. Today, we're talking about cold, cough, and flu season. To help the little ones transition to bedtime, I recommend solutions with effective and wholesome ingredients like calming chamomile and natural honey, which can be found in Zarbi's Children's Gentle Bedtime Products. What's great is they come in multiple formats like a melatonin-free gummy and a syrup. But sometimes despite our best efforts, our kids still get sick. If your child is experiencing a fever, there are two key ingredients that can reduce a fever, acetaminophen and ibuprofen. Acetaminophen can be found in medicines like children's Tylenol or infant's Tylenol. Ibuprofen can be found in children's and infant's Motrin. In addition to reducing a fever, children's Motrin can relieve minor aches and pains and it lasts up to eight hours. And for adults, just like kids, if you're experiencing a fever, consider acetaminophen 
or ibuprofen. For fast pain relief, I like to recommend Tylenol rapid release gels, which contain acetaminophen. If you're experiencing a runny nose and sneezing, sometimes we aren't sure if it's from a cold or allergies. Allergy symptoms usually fur up when you're exposed to allergens that you're most sensitive to and cause symptoms such as itchy eyes, nose, or throat. Make sure to pay attention to when you experience these symptoms so you can identify the allergens that bother you. The good news is the ingredient diphenhydramine can relieve a runny nose or sneezing, whether from allergies or the common cold. This effective allergy and cold relief can be found in Benadryl Allergy Ultra Tabs, which are effective day or night. Also, look for a decongestant like pseudoephedrine that targets sinus pressure and congestion. This can be found in products like Certic D and Sudafed Sinus Congestion. You can find them behind the pharmacy counter. For more information on ingredients, dosing, and tips to make the most of your health, you can go to healthinhand.org. As we get closer to Black Friday in a few weeks, many people and companies are trying to push for a green November, a time when we can think about the environment and take the challenge that we can all look at new items we'll get on the biggest shopping day of the year, not to mention all of the packaging that goes along with it. Here's some of the easy to do things that will help you do your part in helping Mother Nature. Reuse, repurpose, and then recycle. It's not sustainable to make use and dispose. It's partly our responsibility as consumers and partly the responsibility of companies to switch to eliminating waste. So before putting something in the recycling bin, first think about whether it can be reused or repurposed as something else. Food containers are a great example of this. Another tip, when you're driving, go easy on the accelerator and brakes. Be sure to make efficient use of fuel by accelerating gently, maintain a steady speed, and coast to decelerate. Those are just two easy things you can do to think about our environment this year. And you think about all the Amazon boxes. Yes. I repurpose the <laughs> heck out of those things. That's my, yeah, your best repurposing are those boxes. No kidding. I had to laugh during the speeding one because I'm sitting oh next to a super speeder. I am literally, state of Georgia, I'm a super and speeder. And you have an electric car. I know, I know. Well, I have more flash after this, y'all. Hey, welcome back to Daily Flash. It's for up time for us to take a look at the lifestyles of the rich and famous as we dive into celebrity real estate. Get your wallet out. I am. Okay, uh, you ready? Apple Pay. At least. Uh, let's start with serial home flippers Ellen DeGeneres and Portia de Rossi. The famous pair are offering a historic Tuscan style estate in the heart of Montecito, California, for forty-six million bucks. <laughs> what a bargain! Uh, the duo purchased the property for twenty-two million in June, transformed it into a home modeled after an Italian villa. Wow. The five-bed, five-bath estate was originally built back. In 1919, it features classic elements like grand columns, arched doorways, coffered ceilings, and intricate molding throughout. This Mediterranean-style masterpiece can be fully uh, purchased fully furnished, so the new owner can enjoy the hand-selected decor the moment they get the keys. All right, now picture this. Photographer Annie Leibovitz, known for her celebrity portraits, is selling her longtime West Side home in New York City for $8.6 million. This is a significant loss for the artist who purchased the place in 2014 for $11 million. The duplex has four bedrooms and is located near the Lincoln Center. Ooh, wow. The apartment features high ceilings, wood floors all throughout, and you can get curved doorways that will take you from the grand entrance into a grand living room. French doors separate the living space from the kitchen. Large windows offer light and views of Central Park. The kitchen recently remodeled and has a new dining nook butler's pantry, and new high-end appliances. There's also a home office, laundry room, primary bedroom with a huge bath on the main level. Ooh, wow. The other bedrooms are on the second level. Yeah, The beds, uh, the building rather, also has these amenities. A, a concierge, a doorman service, as well as private storage. I like that uh, booth that she had there in the kitchen. That was pretty neat. I, uh, you, well, you know the little nook, the yeah, area in there? That. And you, uh, you're starting to, uh, like your mid-century modern houses yeah. have a lot of those because it was a place in the morning yeah. you know, the family would meet, sit down, and uh, to have breakfast. But yeah. all of that has actually gone uh, to the wayside, and now people are just eating on the go. I guess that's a, that sort of thing. Bench seating. Yeah. As, as we were showing uh, Portia and Ellen's house, were you thinking like, okay, you buy this house, and they got plenty of houses, I yeah. imagine. Like it would be hard. Like wow, this is so beautiful. 
Yeah. Let's get rid of it, you know? And I'm saying, I, like, I would sit down and go, oh, this is so nice. I don't want to go anywhere else. But what is that feeling I to get rid of it? I guess because they flip so many of those homes, they don't care. And, yeah, I know. And I don't know. I, I know Courtney Cox does the same kind of thing. And I think, you, I would think you'd get, you know, attached to something and, and want to stay. And you want to see it. Like, look at what I've done. Check that yeah. out. That does it for our show. We appreciate y'all joining us. Y'all take care. We will see you when we look at you. Here's some folks who make our show great as it is. Wait, bye, y'all. <laughs> What's that, Sean? <laughs>